Hi, everyone, and welcome to our latest Grand Rounds of Neurology Roundtable discussion. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the FDA approval for the first PDI5 inhibitor to treat erectile dysfunction, which was initially given to sildenafil, also known as Viagra, and the little blue pill. While initial research for this class of drugs examined their use in cardiovascular disease, researchers found a high level of efficacy in treating erectile dysfunction or E. And the FDA gave approval for the treatment in this area has had a major impact, a major cultural impact around the world. As a urologist, uh, we all have patients that we see in the office who are talking about stones, something else like that on the way out. They ask you about, I want to talk to you about that pill for erections or things like that. It, it really has uh, uh, turned things upside down. With me today are three key figures, figures, real pioneers and researchers in the initial approval and continuing use of PD-5 inhibitors for the treatment of ED. First, Dr. Mark Hirsch, who is a urologist who has been with the Food and Drug Administration for many years in the Division of Urology, Obstetrics, and Gynecology, and medical team leader in urology with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. We're very fortunate Mark is joining us along with a longtime friend, Ray Rosen, who now is an adjunct full professor of psychiatry at UCSF School of Medicine, and another friend, Erwin Goldstein, um, who is a di uh, director of sexual medicine at Alvarada Hospital and director of the San Diego Sexual Medicine uh, Society and editor-in-chief of Sexual Medicine Reviews. So, we're very fortunate to have this group with us. We will discuss their contributions to the approval process, the impact of an outcome of the drug, and then talk a little bit about the future. I'd like to start with the, uh, Dr. Mark Hirsch, um, who has been in the center of this. And Mark, can you, you know, think back to 25 years ago and before that, can you discuss with us what led to the investigations in the PD? E5 inhibitors for the use in sexual dysfunction and your role in the FDA's role. I'm sure it was challenging to see this new drug and how you assess it. Well, I think there was a clear need for something better than what we had previously, intracorporeal injections, penile prostheses, um, various vacuum aids. And I think the agency recognized that there was a need to help men in this regard and to encourage research. So I'm, I'm proud to say that we did that um, in conjunction with the excellent work by the pharmaceutical companies, academicians that we have here, uh, social scientists, basic researchers, and I think we played a, a, a role in it, but just a small role compared to everyone else. And I'm so proud to be here with Dr. Goldstein and Dr. Rosen, who also played pivotal roles. Great. So um, thanks, Mark. Well, and I guess it was a challenge, in, you know, in addition to the normal safety and efficacy parameters for approval, uh, sort of validated instruments. We didn't really have a lot of them. Then uh, Dr. Rosen uh, and Dr. Goldstein, maybe you could comment on those things. Sure. I'll go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, David. Uh, as you said, uh, there was an immediate challenge to have um, sensitive, reliable, validated uh, outcome measures. In the very earliest trials, uh, physiologic measures such as the Rigi scanner device for measuring penile circumference change uh, were used in, in laboratory settings to show um, proof of concept that these drugs really did impact erection. But that kind of laboratory based methodology was obviously inappropriate for large scale, particularly phase three at home. Uh, real-world uh, types of clinical trials. So in order to um, design those trials in a way to yield um, sensitive, reliable, quantifiable uh, outcome measures, uh, I had the uh, good fortune and, and privilege to work very closely with uh, Pfizer scientists and leading academics, including Dr. Goldstein and others, uh, to uh, conduct a program of research in parallel 
to the drug development program to uh, our task was to develop and validate um, outcome paper and pencil or simple uh, patient based outcome measures that would stand up to scientific uh, scrutiny. Uh, one measure in particular, we developed the International Index of Erectile Function, IIEF. Uh, I'm pleased to say has become a, an industry standard in the field. And um, one part that I'm personally proud of is that we negotiated, the academics and myself negotiated with Pfizer from the very beginning that these instruments, the IIEF in particular, would be in the public domain uh, from day one and would be available to any bona fide investigator who is doing, you know, uh, meaningful research in this area. Well, so, I can tell you that uh, it is used every day. I can, again, thinking about my clinic this week, uh, just about every man that comes in, we order AUA symptom score and, uh, and, and the, your score. Yeah. Uh, Erwin, let me just uh, switch over to you. Uh, I, I know a, a lot of us in urology, when we think of sexual medicine and dysfunction, uh, uh, think of you and all, all that you have contributed. I, I wonder if you might just uh, to shed some light on what you think uh, has been your, your observations on the impact of approval including quality of life improvement for patients and, and and also any controversies that arose as a result of the approval. David, thank you so much. As you well know, my mentor was uh, Bob Crane and a good friend of yours and an amazing mentor for me. We were uh, funded for 25 years with the NIH uh, to study uh, the physiology of erectile function and then the pathophysiology of the dysfunction. And as we were, as Mark was saying, the standard of care were invasive treatments with either injections or, or penile prostheses. And when we got the penile prostheses, we would take tissue out and study it in basic science uh, laboratory settings. And uh, in 1991, we were the absolute first lab among uh, other labs to show that nitric oxide, an actual gas, was the, uh -huh. was the, was the hidden neurotransmitter for penile erection. And can you imagine it took us to the year 1991 till we actually figured out what was the chemistry of penile erection? Uh, as uh, uh, in that time frame, of course, uh, that's when the, uh, the the study was showing not that much efficacy uh, within its cardiovascular area. And of course, everybody knows that in the oral study, when people had the overnight, they all noticed they had uh, improved nocturnal erections. And then there was a shift of the emphasis of the uh, development of the drug to uh, the, the concept of erectile dysfunction versus the cardiovascular uh, anginal treatment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, I worked with Pierre Wicker and other uh, Pfizer personnel, both in, in Groton, Connecticut, and in Sandwich, and we helped develop, along with Ray and many other consultants, uh, the phase two and phase three uh, clinical trials so they would have appropriate endpoints and uh, assessments for safety and to meet efficacy. And my site in Boston with Bob Crane and others, we did virtually every phase two and phase three clinical trial. So for us, we were like uh, amazingly intimately involved. And uh, uh, when the uh, paper came out in the New England Journal paper, uh, for whatever reason, I was the uh, first author and the uh, uh, um, author that people sent phone calls to. So I was the... Uh, um, mm -hmm. Well, the responding author, <laughs> and yeah. we received like one million phone calls. It was crazy. Well, I want to you know uh, compliment all three of you because this was a triangle of, of groups working together. Uh, Mark with the FDA, Ray and you, uh, and Pfizer uh, to do this right and. Uh, and we don't always see that right now with some of the things happen with uh, with uh, studies and then sort of thrown on us without a lot of input. Um, I just want to finish up by saying, see if anybody else has any comments, but maybe a, a little bit about the future of uh, PD five inhibitors. Are we are we sort of at the peak right now, or other things going to happen? Uh, and uh, we're seeing so many things become over-the-counter 
Uh, do you think that's going to happen uh, with this sometime soon? So I'll, I'll start uh, start maybe uh, with uh, Irwin first and then uh, go to Ray and then Mark, and then we'll finish up. Well, first of all, David, again, thank you for doing this. It's a 25-year it's anniversary of an amazing, historic, game-changing event. Uh, it, it, previous to this was Giles Brindley injection. <laughs> that was another major event, but this uh, has a little more potential use for people. Uh, the future is over the counter. There's no question. It would be behind the counter, I imagine, uh, with appropriate uh, um, um, I, you know, identification for side effects and for people on nitrates. But uh, uh, getting this away from uh, uh, physicians allows us to get rid of the you know, the, 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 the reliance upon over-the-counter things in the garages and in the uh, uh, um, in, in health food stores that really have no safety and efficacy data. So I, I think the future is uh, using these amazing drugs, but uh, without the interference of the need for the physician. And Ray? Um, yeah, David, I think the field has advanced in a number of ways uh, that are very um, gratifying to me personally. Uh, in one direction, we've seen the use of PD-5s and the research on PD-5 inhibitors being extended to conditions like pulmonary hypertension, Raynaud's disease, a variety of reproductive uh, uh, issues in women. And um, uh, we just participated, the three of us, in a conference to consider uh, the possible adoption of uh, PD-5 inhibitors in preventive cardiology, uh, taking, the, taking the, the, the story back to where it all began, whether there might be a role in it. The, these are uh, future, uh, future ideas, David. I don't want to present them as fait accompli, but certainly the future looks very uh, rich as far as potential application of the drug class to other conditions that may benefit from the vasodilatation effects uh, of the drugs, which, which appear to be quite universal uh, in men um, and in women. Um, I think also um, to highlight another theme of the discussion is the development of uh, oral agents, PD-5 inhibitors, um, has really democratized the uh, management of sexual dysfunction. Whether or not the drugs uh, ever succeed in becoming over-the-counter, these are drugs that have been widely adopted in primary care practices, in all sorts of practices outside the specialty of sexual medicine or urology. It's brought, it's brought sexual dysfunction and sexual medicine very much into the mainstream of general practice in medicine. And personally, I think that's been one of the most uh, very positive outcomes uh, of, of this whole thing. For me, we started out with Mark Hirsch, and let's uh, end with Mark. Uh, and I don't want to put you on the spot with your position or anything. Um, we know we know the the issue uh, with nit with nitroglycerin and things. So there, there are some things you need to be concerned about the drug. But um, what what do you see as the future, Mark? And uh, from your standpoint, uh, and if you can comment about the over the counter uh, idea, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm, again, honored to be here, and I just love the foresight of Drs. Goldstein and Rosen, uh, who have done this, been this way for so many years. At the agency, I'm proud to say that we do things in a very rigorous fashion. Uh, things will need to be proven more, if, more effective than they are dangerous. Um, and we will do so for all these different types of indications and for the over-the-counter for example, patients will need to be able to show they understand these complicated labels. Patients mm -hmm. will need to be able to self-select and properly deselect, not use it when they shouldn't use it. And eventually, and patients will have to show that they can use it safely in a uh, over-the-counter-like setting. And we will review the data just the way we did 25 years ago, very rigorously to make sure that efficacy outweighs safety. Right. Well, you know, we we all rely on you, and uh, we respect what you do and what the FDA does. I know there's a lot of sh pot shots taken over the years, and uh, uh, I don't think that's that's all that's right. Anyway, uh, 
This has been a, a I'm I'm the one that's honored to be here with the the three giants and and this and and we all remember the day Viagra came out and yeah. what, what it meant and and I don't think a lot of people know the history behind it. That's what makes this uh, this uh, get together in the last fifteen minutes uh, uh, something that's uh, that that's going to be listened to and people understand where we're going. So again. Thank all three of you for your time, and uh, maybe we'll get together again 25 years from now uh, and uh, look at something else new. But ac actually, there's so many things going on, we might get this group together here in a year or so to talk about some of the other advances. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.